Okay, and we should be live and good to go. Hello, everyone. I am Sarah Weaver. I use she, her pronouns and live in Minnetonka, Minnesota on the stolen lands of Dakota, Bedote, and Ojibwe nations. I am the Special Projects Coordinator for ELCA Young Adult Ministries, and I have the great pleasure to be involved with hashtag no plastics for Lent this year. Um, and before I introduce our wonderful guest for this evening, I want to invite all of you to participate in No Plastics for Lent this year to find a sustainability practice um, across that um, your lives that is accessible and meaningful for you. This initiative is led by young adults across um, the ELCA church um, and it invites us into a season of prayer for creation to lament the ways that we have been complicit in the degradation of the earth and to take action to care for our neighbor in fasting from the things that are hurting our planet. So along with these wonderful speakers that we have on Monday evenings, we will also have Zoom and small groups that you can join on Tuesday nights, Thursday nights, Sunday afternoons. Um, there's a Wednesday meditation reflection and Fridays ask a plastics engineer answers. And tonight we have Julie Garish joining us to talk about her experience at the Climate Change Conference COP26. So Julie, I will now invite you to introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Julie. Um, I am, I use she, her pronouns, and I live in Berkeley, California on Ohlone land. And I am getting an MDiv with a concentration in climate justice at Pacific Lutheran Theological Seminary, otherwise known as PLTS. I'm originally from Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks. Awesome, Julie, we're so glad to have you here tonight um, and to talk about your experience at COP26, like I mentioned. So how was your experience? I would love to hear about the people that you met and the things that you saw, the things that you did, all of that that you were able to participate in. Yes. Okay, so COP26 is the UN Climate Conference, and this was the 26th one. It happens every year. This was the first one that I have gone to, and it was in Glasgow, Cal Glasgow, not California, Glasgow, Scotland. <laughs> um, and it was such an experience. Um, I was there for the first week. It was two weeks long. And I went along with a delegation from the ELCA and um, I have to say my first day there, I felt really disillusioned. Um, just all the people walking around in their suits and um, and there were mostly men speaking and, um, and I saw that in the room full of pavilions where there was like a water pavilion, there was a sustainable energy pavilion. And then a bunch of different countries had pavilions too, like um, Saudi Arabia or the US had one. Um, and there was also one called like Nature Positive. And I looked at the sponsors for it and I saw Amazon and like WWF, which I know also has a really highly paid CEO. And I was like, what, what the heck? But my second day, um, after journaling about it, I went to another pavilion called the Resilience Pavilion. And um, there was just room for more like discussion amongst people. And I felt renewed hope that even though I didn't have a lot of hope for the politicians at the conference, um, I knew that what is good about COP is all of these people coming together every year yeah. and that the world can see like this is happening. There are people gathering about climate change and people care. Um, yeah, so that kind of changed my perspective on the event. Like, of course, this is not the one event to change the course of how humans deal with climate change, but this is an event and it's a great place to meet people, um, network, learn about other countries and what they're doing in the world and, and just like individual people too. 
Um, and I find like each person in their local context, that is what changes the world. Right. Like people connecting with their local contexts and then building relationships with people around the world. Yeah. Yeah. I am interested um, to know if like you were, what was a person or like a community or something that you met there that you were able to talk with? Um, if you can remember anyone specifically, yeah. what was like the first person or anything that comes to mind that you were able to like connect with and relate to on that like personal level that you were talking about? I think the first person that comes to mind as doing something really cool in their context is um, Moses Quolin. Don't know if you can see that, but Liberia Forest Media Watch. He is a young adult in Liberia. I met him in the bus at one of the events, like in between. And he had worked for the government as a journalist, but he switched to freelance journalism so that he could work more with like other young adults in his context. And he is trying to save the forest from deforestation by like young people who just um, don't have access to education about more sustainable ways of living. And because a lot of the youth like himself and his younger siblings were caught up like in the war mm -hmm. in Liberia when he was a child. So didn't have much of a chance for access to education. So he's using his platform as a journalist to, to support other, um, other young adults. And I just thought that was awesome because he's within his context is really making a difference. And, um, so he was something great, but then there are also people like Don Robin from the Netherlands um, who works in sustainable energy and connecting people. Um, yeah, and Ms. Ulay Kamara. I love how she, you have all the business cards. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people had business cards. Yeah. I didn't carry cards with me, um, but she works with um, sustainable energy in the Gambia and it was really she had just barely gotten there because COVID restrictions were so strict and a lot of countries especially in the global south did not have access to vaccines until much later um, than like the U.S. for example so there were a lot of people who weren't able to be there Mm -hmm. who really should have been able to be there. Right. And Ulai, like a lot of her team were still in the Gambia, like waiting at the airport for when they could finally come to COP, like if at all. Yeah. Um, okay. And one other person who I thought was outstanding and so exciting. I went to um, a session on indigenous education and one of the speakers at the conference, um, she's doing, it's usually called repatriation, but she is calling it rematriation of seeds. Um, so she is indigenous and she works with indigenous seeds that have been co-opted and taken into museums, but they're letting them out and she is rematriating the seeds. Wow. Um, so kind of like, almost the plot of the Lorax, like, yeah. you know how there's one seed left at the end? That's what all she gets sometimes. And she has to wow. like help them survive and let them keep going. And her name is Tiffany, um, Tiffany Travers. Um, and, and there's an indigenous action network where a bunch of tribes from so-called Canada are connecting with each other and um, and like working with each other to revive language and culture and right. seeds and um, just people from all over. So I think the main takeaway I got from that is just start where you are and find like, what is something that you really care about and do that and find other people nearby 
that that are interested in that too right. or at least one person like find a teammate and and just try something because yeah. like I heard at the conference like homegrown solutions are not perfect but they're the pathway to helping the climate yeah right and especially being at like such a large conference with a lot of people, a lot of politicians and people who are not living in marginalized communities necessarily being directly affected by climate change. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are probably a lot of voices that were missing from COP26 that should have been there, like you said. Um, but the fact that there were all these connections and the relationships that you made with these people to learn about their individual practices and their own communities is great. There's a lot of tension um, with COP26, I'm sure. Um, and just thinking about climate change in general. Um, but yeah, I'm very grateful for the way that you uh, have taken in that information um, from COP26 and able to share with us today. Is yeah, there anything else? It would, yeah. Like it would be great if it were better. Like there were yeah. more indigenous people at the conference this year than any year previous, right. but they still weren't like able to share their voices in the decision-making rooms. Right, yes. Like, mm -hmm. So it's like something's got to change, but the people who really have stakes and have like lives at stake in the climate justice movement are often the people who do not get heard or have their words like taken into account at yeah. um, like large climate forums like COP. Right. Yeah, and to not be involved in the decision process, like you said, like mm -hmm. maybe being heard and being given that platform to speak, but then not necessarily doing anything about that. Yeah. Um, anything else about the conference that you want to share before we kind of change subjects a little bit? I just, I think the main thing I want to share is just like, if anyone is listening, just be encouraged in what you are doing, because you are the one who makes a difference. Like, People who make a decision can say that something is their decision, but people on the ground are really what make change happen. Yeah, yeah. and if you have questions, you can reach out to me. Um, yeah, I think m my email can be available or Great. find me on social media. There you go. Yeah. You can put your email in the comments in a little bit. <laughs> Great. Um, so now kind of moving into just your personal relationship with creation. Um, how does your faith or our faith in general um, and our relationship with the creator inspire climate action? Um, and what spiritual practices do you keep that ground you in your justice work? Um, well, will you ask the first part of the question again? Yeah. How does our faith and relationship with the creator inspire climate action? Okay, well, I would say that we are part of the creation and also Jesus told us to love our neighbor and our neighbor includes like people around the globe, people in our community and also the non-human parts of community. So even like the trees in the median who might feel a little lonely because where can their roots connect them to like trees connect under the ground and and i think that their comfort and ability to connect is important too and um so my spiritual practice i really do love trees and I like to talk to trees and hug them and tell them all my secrets. <laughs> and um, they bring me a lot of joy. I also like to listen to my friends and um, listen to voices from around the world and marginalized voices within the community because we are all creation. And, um, and I think, for me as a white person, especially, I have a lot of listening to do. Um, uh, 
Yeah, and also getting myself what I need uh, because I am part of creation. Mm -hmm. I am part of the earth. And so I need to feed my body the food and water that it needs. And sometimes get myself a little treat, like treat yourself, talk to friends. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's great. I think I've seen maybe like a study or a video about how plants grow um, when you're talking with them or when you like talk to them and like give them attention that's not just like watering and fertilizing, anything like that. But I, do you have a plant? <laughs> I have a plant. My peace lily is finally blooming. Oh, yay. I got this peace lily in October. Oh, yes. It's so pretty. It has a little flower now. <laughs> Yeah, and I've seen the studies too that like yeah. talking to plants helps them. Right, helps them grow. I mean, it's literally like all living things, human and non-human relatives, like you said, um, grow in similar ways um, through connection and um, water and food as well, but definitely through yeah. human connection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now all justice work is intersectional. You can't just have climate change by itself. It affects um, everything, living and non-living in this world. Um, so what do you want um, the young adults or people who are watching this video to understand about the impacts of climate change and for us to remember during Lent? Hmm. I would say get in touch with your own roots learn about where you are from as much as you can about where your family is from and learn more about your being in the world and also that there are so many great um, organizations that you can be part of like sun, the sunrise movement is mm -hmm. great or movement generation and then there's also like lutherans restoring creation Women's Earth Alliance and the Center for Climate Justice at PLTS. Um, but there are so many things to be a part of and um, places that you can use your voice and also listen to voices around the world. Yeah. I agree. I'm glad you named all those places too. So hopefully people are able to research those and get connected in whatever ways or um, also like local places too that there are in your community. And you mentioned Lutheran Destroying Creation. They have lists of like local churches and communities doing um, doing uh, creation care ministry. So yes. Yeah, like I learned so much from my home con congregation in Arizona has a community garden. Yeah. that I had not known about before I started getting more into climate justice. Right. And I learned so much from being part of that garden and learned more about other organizations in my community too, like just from getting plugged in a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Well, anything else you want to tell the people watching this video now and in the future? Um, anything else you want us to know or just wise words from Julie? Um, something that I would love for everyone, including myself, to keep in mind are some of the words from Howard Thurman, which are, and I'm not sure if this is exactly how you said it, but find what makes you feel alive and do that because what the world needs are people who are fully alive. Um, so that was really important. Like it doesn't just have to be a struggle, like find what you really love to do and then keep doing more of that as long as it's not harming your neighbor. Yeah. yeah. And just, I hope you have a great day and thank you so much for having me. And I'm glad we're alive together, 2022. <laughs> and um, yeah, I hope we can do work in the future too. Yeah, thank you so much, Julie. Uh, thanks for talking with me tonight and to anyone else watching. So grateful for your voice and your thoughts um, throughout 
this conversation. Um, Julie will also be and has well it has done a video last week uh, of creation care reflection and meditations on Wednesdays. Julie will be doing some more of those as long uh, as alongside with another young adult. So um, you get to hear more of Julie's voice going forward, which I am very thankful for. So thank you so much. Uh, thanks to everyone watching. And like Julie said, I hope you have a great day. And so thankful for all of you. Um, I hope you can all join in for our other No Plastics for Lent um, programs and initiatives and gatherings uh, so we can support each other in this community uh, in ways that we can care for creation. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.